Are you excited? <laughs> Welcome to the first video in a Van Other Collective. Uh, it's a collective collaboration of YouTubers that are campers, caravanners, motomers, camper vanners, people that just love being in the outdoors. But have a watch. Um, jump on the description. You'll find links to all the other channels. And this should be appearing in a playlist, but I'm not that good with YouTube, so fingers crossed. You can tell me question one is. So what was it that got you into vanning? Now to try and do that with actually looking at the camera. <laughs> so as if you're actually interested. Ow, <laughs> that's my glasses. Can we get a double thumbs up? Double thumbs up. <laughs> So now, what was the question? I don't know what the question was. I wasn't what, really paying attention. What was it that got you into fanning? What, in the beginning? In the middle? I don't know. In the middle, we went away for a bit. A little long holiday. What, when we gave up work? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, when we stopped working, that thing. That horrible thing, it gets in the way of work. Work, the yeah. big, big W. So we went away for eight months with zero plan. We just got in the van and went. But I suppose in the beginning, we got the first caravan, didn't we? We did. A little tiny one, a little old one. See, so, yeah, and then we had some caravans. And then we got rid of the caravan because we didn't use one for 12 months. It sat in the storage yard. And then we bought the little motorhome. We did. Cause and we... then we bought a bigger motorhome. Hmm. And now we've gone back to a caravan and a camper van. And maybe we're just addicted to travel. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. Yeah. I fell apart. There you go. There's the honest answer. Yeah. You had a, me a mental breakdown. I did. I had a mental breakdown. I took two months off work going, oh, yeah, I don't want to do this anymore. And somewhere along the line, I found a little blog called Your... Oh, what was it called? I can't even think what it was called now. Europe by Camper, written by some nice people called Adam and Sophie. They now own the Mot Home Wi-Fi company thing. It gave me something to read and it gave me a thought. It gave me a challenge. It gave me an idea. I spent that time tidying up our little motorhome. And we then went off into France, didn't we? We did. We jumped on the ferry and went to France just for a holiday, not on a big trip, not on a let's go forever. And we loved it. We drove from, where did we get? We drove from Calais, didn't we? Yeah, all the way down all to the way South to France. Saint Tropez and back. In a fortnight. fortnight. Well, in probably 20 days. But yeah. Yeah. All the way down and all the way back. Stopping on airs. We booked a campsite at the bottom, which was the worst mistake we ever made. Because we found this most gorgeous little air sat at the top of a cliff looking down on a blue lake. Yeah, it was gorgeous. We'd stop for lunch. But we we'd stay. actually... We'd stayed overnight, but we'd, we could have stayed there forever because it was just perfect. Yeah. So, oh, I don't know. My vanning experience, yes, that got me into vanning. Now it's my life. I can't imagine ever living in a house. If I do, it will be... A build. It will. There'll be a somewhere foreign. There'll be a pile of bricks yeah. somewhere that will be a project to actually fill up my time rather than the house. It will be a, let's rebuild a water mill in the middle of France somewhere or something. <laughs> I don't know. Something random, you know, a winemaker's cottage in Hungary. Who knows? Something will turn up. Always does. How long have we been camping for? You, years. Me, since, since you were a child. child. Yeah, since I was this big. I'm not much bigger than that now, by the way. <laughs> but since I was this big. And me, since I met you. Oh no, you camped before that. Because when I first met you, you had a tent I and you a took tent, away. Yes, I did have a tent and I did stay in static caravans. And you true. came back two days later because you hadn't put the penny bits <laughs> in the bottom of the pole, so it fell down. That's true. So yes, I have been camping in a tent. What is your outfit? Well, what is our outfit? Currently, we have a Volkswagen camper van that Paul built. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sort of. Sort of. Sort of. And we have a baby caravan to live in because but, we are currently campsite wardens. So this is the best for us at the moment. Yeah, because we've got the best of both worlds. We've got the caravan, which gives us space, gives us somewhere to to put all our junk and then we've still got the camper van for when we want to escape for the weekend mm. 
it's yeah it's a good setup at the minute um, is it our long-term setup probably not because at some point we shall need to vanish and go and see the world again because i'm bored of staying still you've been doing it for five years five years five of staying years. still staying five still. years of staying still after after traveling is hard work so at some point retirement <laughs> plan i've got a little way to go yet <laughs> six months <laughs> 12 months 12 months well we're off on holiday uh, in you know, then, probably 10 years a few weeks <laughs> maybe maybe i'll retire sooner than that and then i will get to go and i shall need a big motorhome home with big off-road tires that's like kitted out for the winter and can give me a ski season and doesn't require ever plugging in so we need lots of roof space for lots of solar panels and lots of space for lithium batteries hmm. Or maybe I need to win the lottery in between so that that Morello can be here. Mm. One or the other. Yeah, the other first, I think. I, uh, don't, think gonna, I don't think you're going to win the lottery. Uh, not going to win the lottery. <laughs> but but you never know. I might have to start playing, but you never know. I might win at some point. You might. You, you might. Always good luck on that one. <laughs> so question four. What is your most embarrassing camping moment? Well, we had several of those when we were travelling. One where you tried to do a three-point turn on a Greek mountainside. I managed it. You did hit the van. You nearly took the van out over the It was only the man running down the road shouting at you that made you think <laughs> I'd gone too far. Otherwise, you wouldn't have known. We had a big overhang. It was fine. The overhang just was over the cliff. <laughs> it could have been worse, but it was okay. And on the same trip, we've done the same thing, going down a road that was only six foot six wide, and we were more than six foot six wide. We it did have a bit of a squash. It scratched <laughs> the bumper. It did nothing else. It scratched the bumper. And we learned in Italian how to buy fiberglass. We did. So That's it was true. an educational trip. <laughs> it was. <laughs> so yeah. you can't knock that. So, no. so basically what we learned is don't trust the sat nav because... It doesn't matter how much money you spent on sat nav, it's still wrong. And just kind of go where you get feeling. If it looks too small, don't go down it's that road. too small. Yeah, if the coaches aren't driving that way down the mountain to turn around, there's a big reason. Because they know where they're going. And when they're trying to get out of the coach park down the one-way street, follow them. There is that one as well, which is where we went one-way street didn't we? Down towards the supermarket. Yeah, we had to go down the one way, wrong the way. There had obviously been millions of motorhomes had been down there because the people stopped in the middle of the one way road coming towards us and started waving at us because they knew we couldn't go under the bridge. See? So don't trust your sat now. And also, I think one of the other big ones was when we were going to head down the gorge to go and stay overnight. Ah, oh, some, some people... And I had a meltdown. Some people had put this coordinates of this great camping stop <laughs> right, in the middle of nowhere. It looked fantastic. Gorge beautiful water cascading down the side of it we wonder why we're getting funny looks didn't we but everyone stared at us when we were driving down it, and that might have been because actually it was only really a land rover track <laughs> but the nice bulgarian man in the land rover did say follow me and i'll get you back out he did so it was very nice and it ended up nice because we had a nice parking spot outside a nice hotel and we had roast lamb roast lamb, roast lamb off the spit and so a nice so... white brandy oh yeah I forgot about <laughs> always always go in the local bar and drink the local ales or brandies, or wines, or, or red anything. Cedars, or... <laughs> Just join in yeah. with the locals. Exactly, yeah. And and the man that drives you out with his Land Rover, buy him a drink. Top tip there. So last question, what is your number one camping tip? I think we've just said that really, haven't we? <sighs> Live it. Live it. Live love it. it. Live it. Love it. Travel where you can. Yeah. When you can. Don't be frightened of the locals. However you can. Yeah, basically, yeah. I, I would say some of our best experiences ever is where we've skipped the tourist traps. You've got to go and see them. Right? When we went to Italy, we had to go and tick off Rome, Pisa. Where else did we go? I don't know, Pompeii. Yeah. The Cinque Terre. You've got to see them, but also you've got to get away from those tourist traps and you've got to go and see the local stuff. We spent six weeks in romania right? we didn't see another tourist but we saw some amazing sites and, and met some amazing people yeah. 
the man uh, cutting his wood down to build his fire where we were camping. Yeah, 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 yeah. We camped in a campsite, and a man got a chainsaw out right the front of his caravan. Now, if you ever want to be scared, or you're going to get <laughs> murdered in the middle of nowhere, and a man gets a chainsaw out right and sort of just stands in the air going, vroom, 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 yeah, then you know you're always a bit doomed. Put his beer but, in the put his beer in the river to cool it exactly. off, didn't he? It was really good. It's, it's part of life, isn't it? It's usually... it was it was hard to start with, but we embraced it as we carried on. Yes. I would say, yeah, I completely agree. It was an experience and you've got to experience things. People people are nice. Just don't ever forget, people are nice. Hi, check out the playlist and watch all of the blogs and then subscribe to our YouTube channel.